Kia ora. Um, I first want to thank my lovely life partner who has grown up with me together and has been tremendously uh, supportive and formative in everything I do and continue to do. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, so uh, this is a journey. Life's a journey. My journey is, is really uh, rather boring, uh, I, I think, until, uh, but it's, it has some exciting parts, including this past week. Um, and uh, I, I tend to think in pictures. And so my journey led me to a thing called Passive House, which is German-based um, uh, physics uh, way to do low energy. And this led me to a deeper understanding of the interconnectedness of everything that I perceive. And what this did for me was it led me to a question, how do I optimize myself in, within the greater systems as a whole with the short time that I have on this planet? And I came to this conscious realization that at some point our species needs to come, um, has become an intertwined with the earth in such a way that we've become endemic. Our actions actually intertwine with all systems. And um, at some point we can come to grips with the fact that we are an endemic species and that we need to understand that the earth, as Sonia said, will be fine. Mother marches on. Right? If we want to be part of this, it's our choice whether to align our interactions with these systems or she'll make more. And um, I start plugging myself into what it is about the way, what I do, which I'm an architect and I'm a builder. I design and I build stuff. And these stuff have very real impact on people and has very real impact on our planet. And um, as I realize that our designers and builders as a designer and builder, our responsibilities are actually quite great compared to a lot of people. If I'm a filmmaker, or I'm an accountant, or I'm a lawyer, or I'm a doctor, my footprint is kind of sized pretty according with everybody else's. But as an architect and builder, everything I do will reflect many, many generations beyond where I am, right? Because I can walk through Wellington and see buildings that are 100 years old easy. Right? So, so I need to take this serious. And as a species that is threatened by the Earth's inevitable return to balance, um, we need to provide as builders and as, um, as, as architects a turnkey system of shelter, a shelter that could be designed, manufactured, assembled, disassembled, and reassembled as needed as the climate imperative dictates. And... Um, I look now at this and I say, well, how, how, how can this future work? How can it be that, that, that this really ossified architectural design and construction system that we live in, how can it come into balance with the earth? And I think to myself, you know, I kept getting really depressed about it because I kept looking at this exponential growth, per, exponential growth curve, expo and I just couldn't get past this way of thinking, and what I realized was, ah, oh, I'm limiting myself to the human species. I'm thinking in terms of humankind. And so I pulled back and I pulled back and that curve got smaller and smaller the more globally I thought. And I said, you know, that's just a little bump in the overall geologic history of mother, right? She's, she's young. And so as I did that, I said, you know what? Forget about the growth exponential curve. Forget about that growth curve. We'll get over it some way. Either we'll feel our way through it or we'll not. But at some point, it's either going to gently go down or it's going to come down. This We don't know how that curves. But what does the act of shelter making look like post-curve, right? And I start thinking about this. I think, you know, we're kind of like, um, we're kind of like, um, we, we need to kind of go beyond in the way we're thinking. And I start thinking about this future intertwined existence and I start thinking about sci-fi, one of my favorite things to think about. And the typical sci-fi thing, like I'm out in space and my oxygen scrubbers have died and, and we only got a, so much of air left. And then I, oh, oh, on the scope, look out there, there's an alien vessel. The alien vessel, it doesn't seem to be anybody there, but we're gonna have to go over there. Maybe they have oxygen scrubbers and I wanna go over there, but, but, but my shuttle's gone, what happens then? 
oh boy, that's really cool. So maybe I go out and I clip myself onto the shovel and I have to open the hatch and it blows me over there and I'm going over to the space and I get to the LA thing and I get there and I work my way in and I find their oxygen scrubber and I dis dis disconnect it and I put it on my back and then, oh, I got to get back to my space, but there's no atmosphere, so I can't blow myself back. I pull myself back over there like, uh, and I come in and all my crew and they're like, ah, the hell is that air? And then I come in and I put it down and I magically plug my alien plug into my spaceship and the air starts coming coming on, right? So it's that type of universal interconnectivity and compatibility that is the future of shelter making post, post uh, exponential growth. So I put my brain on that. I said, okay, well, if that's the system, how do I do it? Well, as designers, we can start with taking basic shapes and putting them together like simple blocks. And these graphically simple shapes can be translated into a universal way to a database that is shared universally by manufacturers, by designers, by contractors, and we will produce widgets in concrete, steel, or whatever material becomes uh, uh, viable in the future. I think the future of materials is not in um, extractive materials, but in biomaterials, the grown materials rather than depleted materials. Now, in the short term, none of that's gonna change. But eventually, we can evolve past this, and we'll be looking at a biologically-based way to create space and um, shelter for us. Now, today, this is very basic. I've created a modular component system. It's being sold. It's transforming the way we build uh, small apartment buildings in the US because it makes building low-energy buildings the same cost as, as standard construction. It makes it super simple. But as we move that past, we go from just making things to fit to actually being able to program things on very micro levels, like I want to plug here, or a macro level is core and shell and living and office within larger buildings. <clears throat> so how does it work today? If you're thinking beyond this, I don't know how it works. I mean, we can start as something really, really simple. We can start with a 30 centimeter module, X, Y, and Z. Right? It's, it's really simple. And then we can kind of expand that module vertically, horizontally. We can start with an interactive database that is the DNA of the system that tackles structural, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire, communications, insulation, opaque components, transparent components, rain screens, extra interior finish, building physics. I mean, there's tons. We just keep adding to this database. We continually can optimize and simplify the system. So manufacturers, designers, and contractors all share the same resources today more effectively plan from all ends, design, manufacture, and construct, and we can lock our systems in early, we can lock our costs in early, we can minimize binning after the concept, we can leave our egos at the door and create shelter. That was the big idea, right? I came here, and I had my big idea, and I came not knowing really what EHF was about, because I wanna, you know, looking from the other side of the world on the website, like, I kind of get it. I think I know what's going on. It sounds really awesome, but I really didn't know what I was stepping into. And I said, well, how do I approach this? Let's just be completely open and just see what happens. And I found myself thinking about this. I was talking to Paula Friday night by the fire. And I realized that what I was going to present, which was what you just saw, was really not what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> So I, what happened to me, and I'm going to just describe this very quickly. So I, I, I rethought, I think in pictures, that's what you're looking at here is the way I think. So we've been building the same way, essentially, like, as we've been building pyramids, right? That, that's the way. And, you're, and we need to change the world. And in my sphere of shelter, we need to get beyond the, 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 the pyramid part of it. So I came here open. I came to Aerola. I looked around and I said, wow, this is amazing that, you know, the, these Edmund Hillary fellows, I've got a bunch of other colleagues who are thinking way big picture who also want to change the world. And there, this interconnectivity was magic. I've been to a lot of places where people are opening their hearts, but they're all, you know, bakers and masseuses. I've yet to be in places where I have people that are actual change makers. And we came up with this idea of harmonic convergence where my actions create a wave but it pushed at the right time, 
I can have somebody who knows blockchain and somebody who knows how to tell a story and somebody who can do Maori indigenous wisdom and somebody can help us relate as people. And perhaps that, that wave can be amplified at every point by this harmonic convergence of people. So my idea got smaller and smaller and smaller, but my world expanded and expanded. And I, and I dared to start thinking of things that I would only think in private. And I said, what if I put my expertise with these other people that know finances and land and law? And I started thinking that, isn't it really a human right that everybody have a safe, comfortable nest? Human right, shelter is a human right. And it's something I would never approach. It's too big a picture for me. It's too big for my little brain. But I looked at this and I said, shelter as a human right is a concept that I can now begin to conquer, not because of me, because I have just the time. I got the easy part. I got the shelter part. You all have all the other parts to start making this frequency grow. So what I'm asking of you, and we're going to do a session later at Shelter as a Human Right, is to jump in the waka and help us start thinking what are the problems, what are potential solutions. This is just beginning. So thank you all very much. Woo!